All right, let's talk about Israel come retrieval. All right. Um, <laughs> we've long speculated that Israel has an official unit dedicated to sperm jacking and cum harvesting. You know what's insane about this? I feel like I keep saying it because it's driving me crazy. To like animate and produce and voice and release something like that, this. Like I, a very close family member of mine, he works in PR, not for Israel, but like, you know, like for companies and right to make something like this like 20 people have to all hear this idea and go no nah, uh-huh yeah good idea at least 20 people were like we should make a twee webcomic animation about sperm jacking that's gonna win over the people who aren't sure <clears throat> and they f did it one of the things i hate the most about having to cover this type of stuff over and over again is the fact that because israel is an apartheid state and because it's like a deeply racist state as well because you can't have like an ethno state without constantly reinforcing this like incredibly racist propaganda when you talk about the things that israel is doing some of it is so unimaginably insane that people look at you like you are making anti-semitic remarks yeah yeah no it, like so this must be anti-semitic right like because if you were to say that if you were to talk about this this thing that they released i don't know a year ago i would be like dude what the f that seems like some crazy you know is this like some anti-semitic conspiracy yeah. theory but because it's so f racist and because it's an ethno state like yeah no this is like weird policies yet when you're obsessed with birth rates when your national project has to be obsessed with like birth rates of a certain ethnicity because it is an ethno-nationalist project this is what you end up doing i don't know i feel like a lot i haven't of seen it, it I, I, I haven't seen this yet by the way like a chatter ooh. a chatter just sent it to me this will be my first reaction a chatter sent this to me by saying dude you have to watch the israel come video i really don't know what point they were trying to make with this i am excited excited for you to see it for the first time i saw it like i woke up like sort of early-ish today and i watched this right before i went to the gym and i don't know if it helped or hurt idf also went over the unit by the way the idf also has a special sperm retrieval unit to collect the seed of fallen idf soldiers the health ministry has set up a special unit that works 24 7 with the idf as the four hospitals housing sperm banks itchilov sheba shamir and balinson is this something that like the american government does as well like i don't know i mean it's weird no matter who does it i think i actually don't understand it at all but like what is is that like a thing i haven't heard of americans doing it imagine if you you're like an 18 year old in israel and that's the unit you get conscripted into your first day in the army is learning how to get a dead guy's calm out and that's it's just so weird dude it is so wild but anyway let's watch this she thinks it's just another rocket attack but a gripping fear prickles through shiley's entire body and it's outside their bedroom window her husband, yeah. This is pretty good. I mean, the animation's cool. Like, the, I like the style. This is, like, the animation style is, like, you know, when Google releases something that's, like... Yeah. Uh, Google celebrates Brad, Brad fucking pride. Brad Trammell calls his, uh corporate Kansas or corporate Memphis? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it, it's basically, like, corporate Memphis is, like, the, the font, obviously, but this is, like, a very specific genre of art that looks like the corporate Memphis font. It's yeah. this art style. I've seen every newer ad that I ever saw on the subway in New York is drawn in this style, where it's, like... It, you know, those those Grubhub ads that are like, uh, you know, we're pro-choice with dinner and women's reproductive rights. It's oh. the same style of, of uh, illustration. Have fights the danger as Shiley runs, leaving everything behind to protect their baby, Shia. She hides from the terrorist hunting her for 27 hours, terrified, hoping like the love ads. of her life will survive. She clings to hope that she won't need to raise their newborn alone. Four days later, her heart shatters. She hugs Shia tightly and knows she must fulfill Yahav's dream to create more life. Like, they didn't have to angle it that way. You know what I mean? I feel like if your goal is to, like, invoke sympathy, I feel like you didn't have to make it seem like there's this, like, weird religious mission to, like, repopulate the Israel with more children, like, more Jewish sons and daughters. You know what I mean? Yeah, this one's interesting because it's, like, one of the few pieces of Israeli propaganda that seems, like, more aimed towards Israelis. But in English. Weirdly in English. But, yeah. like, yeah, specifically towards something, like, that they care about. You're seeing this now. I think like as much as I regularly 
on Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the like, and, all, uh, and how these like operations, I think, in my opinion, play a significant role in like reinforcing America's global power and reinforcing their like interests, the interests of the State Department. Them turning around and correctly calling Israel an apartheid state, you know, maybe a little too late, but still. Them turning around and calling Israel an apartheid state was important because when even those guys are saying it, it just, I think, becomes unavoidable. It becomes something that is impossible for the squish libs to to legitimately look at and try not to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is unfortunate that, like, at the same time as people are finally coming around to, like, fully admitting that this is an apartheid state— it seems like Israel is kind of going even further than that. Like, you know, certainly it's an apartheid state and has been for a while, but it seems like now they're more going towards the territory of just trying to get rid of as many Palestinians as possible. Yeah. They're going far past just restricting their civil rights. The settlement stuff is, I've been thinking about that more than anything else, as far as like Israel's posture towards the West, how they look towards the West. And I feel like that's their big biggest problem all of that like you can't have those you can't have like the ministry of defense handing out rifles one of their main political debates in, in their country is can we expand to the full territory of what we consider israel without becoming too arab you can't do that and then like have people treat you like a normal country or because even these are like that's incredibly like yeah, it's like we're doing normal we're doing 19th century yeah like this already happened right you can't try to do it in 2023 within broad daylight and with like social media like you can try and massage the narrative as best as you can and i say this all the time like the idea that you know you have an idf spokesperson who literally has a permanent job at cnn and msnbc to like immediately contextualize the violent operations that israel is engaging in, in its ethnic cleansing campaign in gaza that only goes so far when you have even human rights watch and amnesty international all these like liberal ngos goes calling it out and also on top of that israel only increasing the brutality as the cost of maintaining an apartheid state becomes ever clearer to them right yeah and they like start squeezing the vice grip tighter and tighter on the necks of the palestinians all of a sudden people are going to see it like there's nothing you can do if you're so used to in your sheer arrogance never getting any sort of contest from western media as a whole you haven't really developed your hasbara since the early 2000s to update it so you come across like an incredibly racist person when you turn around and like people are seeing thousands of children like lifeless bodies getting pulled out out of the rubble dead due to american munitions destroying the entire city block okay and people see those videos and then you turn around and go well those are terrorist children or you turn around and you go oh, well it's actually Hollywood. like you can't do that people look at that and go what the f are you saying that's the most racist thing i've ever heard in my life yeah their entire playbook for like what they're doing now in gaza it hasn't changed since like 2008 2009 since like cast led and that works if everyone is either watching cable news or hearing about this secondhand from people who are watching cable news or reading newspapers it works when information doesn't come in this massive deluge it starts to fall apart when only old people are getting their news that way with settlements they've only had two strategies they've ever had with that right one is to sort of do this diversity brochure strategy like the same thing that colleges do oh dude they I've try to put like minority like yeah they'll, they'll minority put like student they'll, they'll find like a like an ethiopian jewish person to be yeah. like but then the other thing is just to be like oh well like you guys did manifest destiny imagine like portugal brought back slavery right and it's like like, like, no one would be going, well, fucking America did it. Like, let, let's just let Portugal keep doing this, like, forever. I mean, everyone else did it. Yeah, no, it's it's ridiculous because, like, it all stems from might is right, which is, like, inherently, this is, like, an inherently fascist idea, right? So you can't have it both ways. Like, you can't, on the one hand, try to be, like, we are the beacon of democracy in the Middle East, while also simultaneously keep ruthlessly and mercilessly engaging in politics pogroms of the West Bank and slaughtering children in Gaza, okay, two strips of land that are occupied to varying degrees under Israeli control, right, for 
what, 56 years at this point. You can't keep doing that and maintain an apartheid state while simultaneously trying to do the, oh, well, we're a small bean ethno state and we just always keep getting attacked. And that's why we have to behave this way. It's our national security concerns. Everything turns into national security concerns. Did you guys see the lady, black IDF soldier lady who was like- I saw her too, yeah. Doing bodies in spaces about- ethnic cleansing i feel like she was in a coma since like 2014 and just woke up yeah and it's like we're not doing that anymore yeah this was so up yeah yeah they can't even keep up the facade like it took them a month to you know make just one thing one thing with israeli soldiers where they didn't look like complete cowards and jackboots yeah and even in the replies to that tweet they were taunt they were taunting the palestinians they were yeah. moving out of gaza with like cast lead and protective edge they were able to you know even israeli liberals like amos oz were able to like sell this idea that this was like a normal security procedure we have to keep doing this or else like rockets are going to keep coming from gaza and obviously there are a lot of media consumption reasons for why that isn't working this time but it's also like this operation specifically i think it's very clear to everyone that they're really going for a second napka like it's anyone with eyes could see that they want to get as many of them out of there as humanly possible yeah no it's the nakba never ended is true it's a thing that palestinians say all the time they say it because it's true it never really ended it slowed down for a while right but this is absolutely the same principles of like ethnic displacement and also ethnic cleansing that will lead to ethnic displacement puts okay. out a call for the unthinkable to retrieve his seed and be able to continue growing their family oh my she's God. in her own war against time and the crowd leaps into action to complete her desperate mission but it's who too was late. bookmarking that tweet shyly did everything she could to save her family we still have time to save ours bring our children back now okay that's a horrible way to end it like th 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 this is a weird video already but you can't be like shy lee from race remrod w wasn't lucky enough to get her husband's common time but we could still rescue these kids to, for what what you just made a video about cum extraction like w what are you saying here what the f are you saying here i cannot state enough how many times that something like this at least 20 people have to sign off on like the script and animation and voice work 20 people 20 like pretty highly paid people were like this is great full steam ahead on the cum video i don't uh his bar and machine broken come back later i guess that that's all i get from this why would they highlight an unsuccessful cum mission that's the other thing wouldn't it look better if they were like look we got this other guy's cum but if you have multiple cum units in the army, like the army is already having a tough time. The Merkavas are just getting junked. Guys in track pants are just running down like not scared little 18 year old conscripts. They're running down like officers and drilling them. You'd at least want to be like, well, the cum unit's still doing well. Like you wouldn't want to highlight their failures at this point. I don't know what led to this it's not even like an encouraging story. someone rushed into that office one day and was like guys i have a story about an unsuccessful cum mission i feel like that would get you fired at most jobs even if you work for israel i think that it is a consequence of just like not understanding like i said that the rest of the world will look at this and go this is so insane it's not dissimilar to the right-wing commentary around like child genital mutilation yeah. Right? Yeah, where yeah. it's like they're so hopped up on their own personal sauce like they've lost their f minds and don't recognize that it's actually harming the momentum that they could have at a time like this because they personally have decided no 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 this is actually very popular they've mistaken the republican party's success in undermining the legislative body and packing the courts and like actually enforcing their ideals no matter how unpopular those ideals are with genuine popular success and for that reason they still keep going after it they're like no 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 you don't understand this is actually sick like people will vote for us if we keep doing this or even if people don't vote for us it doesn't 
matter. So the IDF has a special unit, a sperm retrieval unit. The health ministry has set up a special unit that works 24-7 with the IDF and the four hospitals housing sperm banks to notify the families of the option of PSR and set it up as quickly as possible following the death of their son or husband. Sperm must be retrieved in 24 hours after the death to increase his chances of viability. Do you think the sperm retrieval unit like post videos like the same way the Kassam brigades are where they put like a, <laughs> they put a, a, a red, red dot. triangle over the guy's balls? They rewind it like putting the syringe in. <laughs> I just, I, I don't even want to know. I, I don't even want to know how the f this is like a real thing. We look for and perform sperm that are moving, but even sperm that is not motile, motile, mobile, they mean? I don't know, mobile? Does not mean that it is not alive. We know how to make it move after it's unfrozen, said Dr. Yuval Orr, head of the IVF unit at Kabla Medical Center. All right, so that's one aspect of the of the propaganda. This aspect of the propaganda is my favorite, doing uh, bodies in space. This is such a throwback. Yeah. Posting on Israel and Palestine, given their uninformed opinion about the subject. And I realized something. I would like the confidence. Like legit, I would love the confidence of people who have the most basic, narrow understanding of this conflict, who go ahead and post information with such a determination. People who have zero understanding of the Middle East and the ripple effect that happens every single time you take any action in this region. Uh, like you watch two TikTok videos and one Instagram post and like, hmm, I'm down. Now I can weigh in on one of like arguably complicated conflict that exists in our world. Yeah, it's so complicated, this dude. This is, I mean, <laughs> it's already such a throwback. She's doing the Israeli version of like, Lord, give me the confidence of a mediocre white man, you know? Yeah. But also like, I didn't even know they were still doing that one. Well, that one is like, in my opinion, that is like being used by all of the, like the squishy libs who don't want to be like, yeah, this is really racist yeah and there's no way to defend it so they're like you don't understand it's a really complex situation and a lot of people don't even want to read a little bit about it okay a lot of people don't even want to read even a little bit about it so they just go along with like oh yeah it must be complicated it's not that complicated the solutions are complicated due to the horrifying violence that palestinians have been subjected to right but as far as like the morality of the situation it's not complicated at all it's one of the few instances in any kind of geopolitical conflict where there is like a very clear morality here there's a very clear morality at play and that is apartheid wrong bad not allowed where is she going with the ripple effect thing yeah i think she's it's classic she's gonna say i assume i only saw like bits and pieces of this but she's probably gonna say like oh well you know the holocaust happened and that uh because of that we need to have a majority israel needs to be a majority jewish ethno state there needs to be a place where like jewish people that you know where jewish people can go there's 20 different arab ethno states out there or muslim ethno states out there why can't there be one jewish one why can't we have our own that kind of thing like if you cannot tell me why yemen actually yemen declare a war on israel maybe you're not the right person to give you i don't even know who she's shadow boxing with i don't even understand yeah. i wonder what she thinks people are saying about yemen like i mean i don't get it like yeah i know why they're doing it you know more than everything i would like the audacity the audacity of people coming to my page, a black Jewish woman, and try to educate me about my own experience. Like, yes, Karen from Minnesota. They're doing the Karen thing? Yeah! Oh my God. Yo! Oh my Yo! God. Oh, that's God, good. This sucks so much. <laughs> yes, Karen. Oh my God. Oh, that's so sick. I really needed your education about my own experience in my own country. Talking to me about social justice and racism, like you care about black people in Israel, <laughs> <laughs> I love standpoint theory because it's like it's like okay forget the fact that they like steril sterilized a bunch of Ethiopian women at the border I had a good time so f you yeah I, I I nothing nothing like pisses me off more than when Israelis do this this like it, like um oh you really think you know what it's like in America it's like okay fine no one's forcing you to take our money you're, yeah you're free to go find another patron wait wasn't it uh sudanese uh refugees like not getting paid in israel like isn't that also another idf detaining uh sudanese migrants who crossed into israel from lebanon and then also like israel also had a policy that tucker carlson loved a while back where they decided that they should have a bounty system for undocumented citizens yeah. and tucker was like that's so sick we should do that here too but anyway this is another way that israel utilizes the foreign workforce and and won't actually pay them. Foreign workers in Israel often have to pay exorbitant placement fees to secure work in the country, which has left many of them with too much debt to leave or will literally not 
pay people will not pay people until they do leave when they're when uh, their time is done that is actually something that the whole like guest worker indentured servitude pro uh, program that is something that is um it's pretty common practice in a lot of countries in the region gulf countries yeah have a huge standard practice of that some, some of our other allies yeah unfortunately there is like you know guest workers get abused in pretty much any country you can think of yeah but it's it's like a codified in a way like pretty much any Gulf Cooperation Council nation that you can think of. Anyway, let's keep going with the standpoint theory. When you actively don't, because you, you care, you will talk about the fact that you are literally being slaughtered out, but you don't. The only time you talk about the experience of black people in Israel is when you fit your political agenda. When you can use and abuse our pain, our struggle to promote your ideology. You exploit... Wait, is she talking about like the Ethiopian uh, Jewish women being sterilized? Like, is she saying like, don't use that against Israel? Like, yeah, like, I don't get what she's like, saying. I don't know if she's saying, like, yeah, it's pretty unclear. Like, is she saying, don't talk about, like, how racist Israelis are if you're going to use that to criticize Israel? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? I think, I think that's what she's saying. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Our struggles to promote an ideology that we don't agree with. And the same people posting these things will never tell you that black people in Israel feel that like this is their homeland that they have bled and sacrificed and fought for this country. I love when they also do this with like a like a Druze person too. Yeah. Like they'll always have like the one Arab guy in the military to be like, you know, I, I love Israel. I don't know what you're talking about. And like they treat us so good here. Please yeah, don't say that they don't. Yeah, no, they have like a diversity brochure for like pretty much any group you can think of. And then it's like, yeah, just ignore the video you saw this week of like a lynch mob of hundreds barring a bunch of uh arab students inside a college yeah and israeli police sitting around doing f nothing yeah or you know any number of different pogroms happening in the west bank and has continued to happen with you know small arms that they got from the united states of america as a matter of fact it's pretty fire great stuff thank you uh, shouts out to itamar ben giver for that my community literally walked through deserts in order to be a part of this country and me living here today wearing these uniforms is the actual realization of my act. And, and well, I guess it cut. So, like, like, I can't imagine she was getting anywhere coherent with that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I guess it was going to end with, like, um, I like living here. Okay, that, okay. Listen, that this is precisely the reason why we have to keep pummeling our concentration camp. Like, we just have to keep doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. non stop that was one of the least coherent propaganda videos that they've done they really are like it's just an across the board uh, collapse in quality yeah oh speaking of propaganda van jones we need to kill more babies parade happened today yeah i do is van jones like he used to be a maoist third world as, as I, you know i know that yeah. i know that but it's like san francisco's very own maoist it, third world is van jones when you watch this video it's very clear he did not know what kind of rally he was going to i feel and i feel like that happens to him a lot yeah like i don't know what's up with the guy <laughs> i pray for peace no more rockets from gaza and no more bombs falling down on the people of gaza god protect the children god protect children. let's end all the horror and all the heartbreak in the holy <laughs> land let's, he's, he's, like, he's no. like, let's stop shut the up you, dude. <laughs> he, there, he like what did he think was gonna happen like first of all you are at the israel has to keep bombing gaza parade okay what the f do you think they were going to say to you like did you not look at the brochure did you not look at the other people that are gonna be on that stage dude i'll be honest in closing when i think about what's happening over there i don't feel powerful to do something about what's happening over there why you're literally an american you're a prominent american media figure you have more power literally to in in stopping this than like 99.999 percent of the population you have more power to stop this than like like the average Israeli citizen does. Did he just like not talk to anyone from the pro-Israel side for like five years? Like anyone, anyone who had any contact with this side would know, like if you go to this rally and you're like, I, hey, I'm a peace guy. I'm against all bombing. They're just going to be screaming at you. I don't know. There's a lovable like stupidity about him. I can yeah. never get mad at him. Yeah. It's just like. Is it? Is it because, always is it because here's Van Jones in 1990? 93? Now, if students can do that in 1960, 
If students could do that in 1970, if students could do that in 1985 and 86, in 1993, when we have the United States government building a death camp, a concentration camp, for black people who have done nothing wrong but get sick and want justice. That's all they've done wrong. If we can't close that death camp, if this generation cannot prevent another Japanese American internment in our lifetime, we should all get haircuts and go get regular jobs and give it up. Well, I mean, that's literally what he did. Yeah. So he wasn't wrong. He literally yeah. was like, yeah, f this Maui sh dog. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I know, but I don't even feel like his transition away from Maoism was even cynical. Like he's such a, there's like such a nice dopiness about him. I literally feel like the first like normal Democrat who he ever talked to in his life while he was a Maoist was like, well, actually we believe in sustainable growth and keeping the unemployment rate at 3.5%. And he was like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I, yeah. I guess we don't have to do a cultural revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Like, he's just, you could sell this guy anything. I think it's very charming. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel, I'm a little bit more cynical, I think. Uh, I, I don't think that he's, like, being honest when he holds these positions. I don't think that he was, like, maybe he was earnestly a Maoist. I don't know. He definitely doesn't have that same vibe that Kirsten Cinema has, though, because he actually has to be charismatic, yeah. whereas Kirsten Cinema could just, like, sit in that role for, you know, at least a long enough time to, you know, get the bag later on. You know what? Maybe you're right, because he didn't in the period when he was a Maoist he doesn't speak Maoist English yeah he didn't say America Kaka yeah no none of the Maoist English style yeah okay I, uh, this is sadder than like you know finding out about the tooth fairy yeah the idea How? that Van Jones isn't real is to maybe do something about what's happening here he's getting upset that they're like shut the f up what did let's take a stand happen? here against anti-Jewish bigotry Let's take a stand against Muslim. Let's ta let's take a stand. <laughs> <laughs> he is saying the most like anodyne no, he shit. He said, "Let's take a stand against Muslims." I mean. <laughs> <laughs> You see, like, it's like he might as well have gotten up there and been like, "It's bad when people die," and the entire crowd is like, "You should f die." <laughs> yeah. yeah. Boo! Get off the. Hey. Yeah, they're screaming no ceasefire. Yeah, he read the room and, and had to re-triangulate and was like, actually, let's take a stance against Muslims. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Against Muslim. let's, ta let's take a stand here against hatred. Let's take a stand here against hatred of all kinds. <laughs> they're booing him. Boo. Oh, God, he did not do his homework. What was the expectation? Like, how did you think this I was, was going to play out? If you've talked to any, like, pro-Israel guy in the last, like, four years, you'd know that's not flying. Like, it's not 1999. He, he, I don't get it. Like, I don't know why he thought that this was going to be different. And also, here's a conversation that I had. Hold on, let oh, me yeah, see if Tommy I can. Vitor, he with Tommy Vitor. With Tommy Vitor, who was, like, very worried that the we need to kill 4,000 more babies rally was going to look bad if they brought this prominent speech speaker on no disrespect to tommy you know I, i'm i'm friendly with the pod johns okay he said the announcement today this is rabbi jill jacobs who uh runs the like liberal zionist i don't know enough about her but i think she was doing what is this some deja vu about tomorrow's rally 20 years ago i was a rabbinical student a number of us had spent the year abroad in israel i think it's like uh true the rabbinic council for human rights in the u.s israel and occupied territories oh wait no this is not that this is not the the thing i was thinking of there's like a liberal zionist justice caucus thing where it's like it's oh, like j yeah, street yeah 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 J Street. It's like J thing, Street, yeah. where it's um, uh, what do you call it? Are you thinking of uh, like if not? Mm, no, well, uh, if not now uh, is like also pretty aggressively yeah, anti-apartheid. They're not liberal Zionists, but they're also kind of like squishy. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've had my problems with if not now, but it's fine. Ultimately, there needs to be like a broad majority. But she says the announcement today: the speakers include John Hagee, who so-called support for Israel is based in anti-Semitism and election denier Mike Johnson. Make this even more clear. Well, she's right. Okay, she's right about this. Tommy Vitor uh, uh, quote tweeted her and said, "Will be a huge mistake to allow Hagee to." speak at this rally. McCain rejected Hagee's endorsement in 2008 because uh, Hagee said that Hitler had been fulfilling God's will by hastening the desire of Jews to return to Israel in accordance with biblical prophecy. This is, I, I mean, like, God bless Tommy Vitor, but if that's like saying it would be a huge mistake to have Himmler speak at the Hitler rally. Yeah, it's like... like what do you think this 
is. Yeah, to which I responded with, why Israel's ambassador to the UN, Gilad Erdan, went and spoke at his mega church a couple weeks ago. Seems to me like Israel's own officials are fond of him for his contribution to settlements and theological Armageddon justifications for Israel's expansion. Then he turned around and tried to do this like, because because other speakers and attendees like the famous hostages should not be forced to be associated with this lunatic. To which I said, and I hadn't seen this by the way, Israel's far right government is doing ethnic cleansing and displacement. This rally shows support for that campaign. They're going to have a far right Holocaust revisionist on who the Israeli government loves. Makes sense to me. Also so Netanyahu doesn't give a f about the hostages, Lamau. And then I uh, showed the Israeli hostage family starting a five-day march on Netanyahu's home. Because, like, the people that are ripping the hostage posters in Israel are the Benjamin Netanyahu fans. The people who are demanding a ceasefire and negotiations with Hamas are literally the hostage families. Yeah. Okay? The ones who are closest in proximity to the victims are the ones who are saying, please stop blowing up my family members most likely which is understandable it's an understandable position to take people in america however are using those hostages cynically to be like no 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 the bombing campaign has to continue the bombing campaign has to continue not dissimilar to the unknown guy that benjamin netanyahu brought to a meeting the first ever meeting that he had with the hostage families where families of kidnapped israelis meet netanyahu only to find unknown family boosting the prime minister we need to stop this whiny behavior we need to win the war said the unverified relatives who appeared at the meeting between the hostages families and the Israeli prime minister and stirred an uproar amongst the others. Yeah, he, since the beginning, Netanyahu has told the hostages families basically to f off. The greatest danger to the hostages families in Israel is like other Israelis. And the greatest danger to the hostages themselves is the Israeli air force. I don't even know how many of them are still alive. Saying that everyone attended this rally like famous of the hostages support ethnic cleansing and displacement is wrong and unfair when people on the right lift up individual shitty actors and comments made at pro Palestine rally we can all agree Hagee sucks. No, this what is ridiculous. Do, what the f does he fit like? <laughs> like what? It, what, what is the year? Does he think this is? But I also don't understand. Like, then why is there even a protest for Israel? Because like the current position, why do you do a protest? You do a protest because the government is not listening to you, right? You do a protest because you're not getting what you want from the government, and you want to show them in a demonstration, a show force that like, no, there is infinitely more support for your opinions out there in the broader public than not, right? Yeah. What's the purpose the behind this protest? The only two things that you could be protesting for that the government isn't giving you that like you're not getting from the white house if you're on the israel side is either that you want to just fully nuke gaza or that you want to do the utterly suicidal thing that somehow netanyahu is sort of on the realistic more realistic side of this fully expand the war in the north like yeah. fully expand the war in the north with lebanon which talk about fucking terrifying netanyahu even he realizes that this is delusional to which I think Yoav Galan has literally had a, a more right-wing position on yeah. than Netanyahu. The defense minister, Yoav Galan, the one who said we're fighting human animals, is the one who's like seemingly, as far as I understand it, I, uh, to the best of my ability, looking at like Israeli sources of information, he's the one who's seemingly trying to open up a new front in the conflict by routinely agitating versus other forces in the government holding back on it is like possibly even Benjamin Netanyahu. They... I he's threatened to resign if they don't let him do it. If you hold that rally, those are the two things that yeah. you are protesting for. Because no, like, no one believes that you're holding a rally asking Hamas to give the hostages back. That's ridiculous. Especially because it's diametrically the opposite of what Netanyahu's government has done so far. So is the rally about forcing the Americans into a ceasefire? In which case, if your goals are that aligned with the Jewish voice for peace, for example, then why don't you go to a pro-Palestinian rally? They're the who are demanding a ceasefire so that, yes, there can be a hostage negotiation so that the hostages can be released. Even logistically speaking, there is no way to be able to release hostages. Like if, if Hamas tomorrow was like, we're done, we're done. We're putting our arms down. We're no longer trying to fight. You can ethnically cleanse all of us. And here are the hostages. You would still need to stop bombing so they could like find the hostages in the goddamn rubble and like go through the multiple militant factions that have other hostages as well and like communicate with one another so the idea that like for the past two weeks three weeks now where everybody's saying no ceasefire release the hostages now while all of the hostage families the immediate family members of the hostages in israel are saying ceasefire so we can actually get the 
hostages out, they're working against one another. Here in America, the pro-Palestinian side is unironically making the same argument that the pro-hostage family side is making in Israel. It's the exact opposite on the ultra-Zionist side. They're saying, no, 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 keep the bombing, keep the bombing. The bombing campaign must continue. Israel has a right to defend itself. Also release the hostages. But they're just cynically using that to not say the other thing, which is Israel should continue doing an ethnic cleansing in the Gaza Strip. That's the real reason why there is a constant cycle of like reinforcing this perspective over and over again. Because if it wasn't that, then a lot of these communities could gather under the same banner of saying, we don't want any more war because you're killing the hostages. Does Tommy Vitor really think that like the rally that like Michael Rappaport is headlining is like an even hand? <laughs> Yeah. Like, well thought out thing. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> this lady is the one that went on, I think channel four and she's been popping the f off. And anytime there's like any kind of pushback against her, she loses her mind and has no way to like deal with the situation. But she's going to do the classic, the Shifa hospital is the Hamas headquarters. She uh, has the same yeah. genotype as like Ronna McDaniel, uh, Sarah Huckabee, like that Sarah same, Huckabee Sanders, yes, yeah, that same exact same, like, yeah, they're like solid liquid and solid as snake, yeah, she's solid as she's <laughs> the scariest one of Israel to the United Kingdom is with us looking at the death toll 11,240. I feel like there's always like a sense of shame in British media whenever they like bring anything wrong that Israel has done up like and it's not the shame of like their complicity in the violence it's more so like I'm so sorry that I have to bring this up but like 4,500 children have been ruthlessly slaughtered in your hands. I think it's because it's like they're on tenuous grounds with Israel like we've talked about it before but you know how like the current crop of like Israeli leaders and like Hasbara operators they don't understand that in order to be like successful propaganda or to successfully sell their side that like Sky News or even the BBC for that matter they have to be seen as reliable and yeah. they think that like any news that isn't 100% saying exactly what Israel says all the time is like they're against them yeah like, they, like they, they aren't sophisticated enough to understand understand what they're doing. Oh, well, it's going to stop when Hamas will release our hostages, when Hamas will surrender, when Hamas will say, I'm not controlling the Gaza Strip anymore, and I'm not I... making this city a city of terror. This is when it's going to stop. And this is our duty to the people. Look, I'm sorry. I know this is not attacking the substance of the argument, but when I look at this woman, I feel like I'm in trouble at school. It feels like I'm 13 and she saw me smoking. It just puts me in this very uncomfortable mood. I feel like they should have got someone different. ...of Israel to protect them, to make sure the 7th of October won't be repeated, just like Hamas spokesperson keeps on saying, we will do it again and again and again. This is ideology that is a jihadi ideology that is dangerous both to Israelis and to the Palestinians, and this is why we must finish the job of dismantle all Hamas capabilities oh, in the Gaza. She's Stinks. Oh, it's sure. like, the didn't you say you were going to finish Kate. the job um, the last three times? I'm so like, glad you're raising times. it because think what type of monstrous mind you need to have in order to make all your headquarters based in hospitals when you know you're making the patients your human shield. Isn't it a monstrous way of thinking? How does that even work? If you're dropping like a... Hey, damn, it isn't like, it's not like there's bullet editing, like in Elden Ring. It's not like, oh, the guy in front of me absorbed all the damage. That's not how a... Oh. bomb works like, what are you talking about lady this is why like the whole human shield narrative is so f psychotic because you're like you're making us bomb you you're making us bomb you it's like okay well then don't do it here's an idea don't f bomb the hospital you know what i mean like this is the thing one israel lies all the f time two israel has shown zero proof that there is a hamas headquarters under the al shiva hospital okay there could be there could be there's a massive complex tunnel system under gaza 400 kilometers this part is true but the idea that like the only way to do this is by murdering like cancer babies to like get to this hospital is cowardly and okay they, they've gone even beyond like dropping bombs on it they're sniping patients through windows they shot a paraplegic guy in the Back. And nurses, they, yeah. they shot nurses, they sniped at nurses. So the idea that like there is conclusive evidence and therefore we have to bomb this hospital is ridiculous. They've never had conclusive evidence. They might be able to prove it after the fact, but they absolutely, every single attack on a hospital thus far has been completely, completely on no intel whatsoever. It's just a rumor on top of which uh, doctors that have worked at that hospital, not just like Palestinian doctors, but also literally, you know, Norwegian doctors, like the doctors on borders doctors have said, there's no 
Hamas underneath this hospital. We've never seen Hamas underneath this hospital. We would at least know that there was like some Hamas relationship. Even if there was, however, and I'm repeating this once again, let's say there's a tunnel system underneath and they've point to that and go, this is where all the Hamas babies were. You know, if they do that kind of shit, it still doesn't justify blowing up hospital doesn't justify shooting at random civilians inside of the hospital doesn't justify shooting the ambulances it's ridiculous yeah it all goes back to like the intentionality argument where if you've killed it's been a month and you are in the five five figures of civilians killed right and your argument is well that was not intentional well okay then that means you suck at this yeah that means you like probably shouldn't have a military if that was not your goal you need to become like costa rica and just sell everything get rid of it you do not deserve to have one yeah it's just a standard that doesn't apply in any other circumstance because like for it to apply you have to see every single palestinian as an enemy combatant and every single ally of a palestinian as an enemy combatant too not just like palestinians and in the eyes of the western world they do see it like that no matter how many times you have like Doctors Without Borders, like nurses, doctors come on television. Like you still try to cut propaganda to be like, but they were trying to kill you, right? Like, weren't they trying to kill you because you're a white woman? Like ridiculous, but they do it regardless. It, it's just another way to like justify the the concept of like all of these guys are their enemy combatants. That's why, you know, Isaac Herzog will go on television and hold up like uh, this. We found this in a kid's room in a children's library. Look, it's an Arabic copy of Mein Kampf with annotations. It's like, what the f are you saying none of this justifies killing children the mind comp thing was again this is the least creative country in human history it's insane like okay like let's say that you really did find that in someone's house in gaza out of however many houses there are in gaza that you bombed the out of that you stormed into that you shot parents and kids you did all the you found Mein Kampf. So, like, then all of this is, like, okay? By the way, while we're talking, it seems the IDF is uh, supposed to raid the Al Shifa hospital right now, according to Al Jazeera News, which is an insane thing to say. But, yeah, that is what's going on currently. The Israeli just notified the Gaza health officials that they plan to raid Al Shifa hospital soon. So, that's what the going on according to al jazeera breaking there it is dude the greatest villains of all time you know the palestinian hospital workers not that long ago there was a huge debate over whether israel intentionally hit a hospital or not yeah and of course you know yeah long, long after long after that all the israeli claims on that have been debunked but yeah you know, it doesn't even matter yeah it doesn't and that's the goal the goal is not to like actually have this conversation the goal is not to like actually inform people 